The Lord be with you. Lord of wondrous light and power, we come to you this day to learn of your will for our lives. Heal our wounds. Lift our spirits. Give us courage and confidence to boldly serve you in all that we do. Amen. Come, let us worship the Lord with gladness. Let us exalt his name together. This is none other than the Lord's house and the place where his blessings rest. Not this building where I stand to speak to you, not these brick walls or stained glass windows, not the tall steeple atop the roof. We, God's chosen people, are the place where God dwells, and we are those on whom his blessings rest. We are the temple of the Most High God and the holy sanctuary where his glory is present. And so, let us begin our worship today a little differently than we do most of the time. I want to invite you to join me in a prayer of confession as we come together to lift up the name of Jesus, our Redeemer and King. Will you pray with me? Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have failed to be an obedient church. We've allowed fear to overrun our faith. We've allowed selfishness to override our compassion. We've not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray, and free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I have good news. The scriptures tell us that if we repent of our sin, He will be faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins. So now, as we begin our time of worship, we do so freed for joyful obedience through the love, the death, the resurrection, and the forgiveness of Jesus our Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. We do have a few announcements we'd like to share with you this morning, beginning with a special announcement for all of our seniors graduating from high school and college. Hello, church family. This is David. We, the leadership of the church, would like to acknowledge the success and achievements of our graduates for May 2020 from high school, colleges, and universities. We need help from you to make this a reality. Information needed to make this a success is as follows. Full name of graduate, parents' names, high school or institution graduating from, degree obtained, future goals or aspirations, and a maximum of six pictures to be used for a slide presentation. All pictures and information can be sent to Brother Chris Jackson's email, which is music at prospectumc.net. There is a very strict timeline for gathering this information, which is as soon as possible or by Wednesday, May 20th. We want to include each graduate from our church, so please share this with each other to ex expedite a wonderful product. This will allow us to organize all materials in an exquisite and seamless package to honor our outstanding graduates at Prospect United Methodist Church. On behalf of our pastor, leadership, staff, and church family, we would like to commend you for your excellence and dedication to Prospect United Methodist Church. God's continued blessings for you and your families. May God keep his mighty right hand over you throughout your continued journey. We want to remind journey. you about our Zoom Sunday School, which you can take part in this morning at 10 a.m., if you're watching this later and have already missed out, we will be posting a link to a recording of that Sunday School class later this week so you can still be a part of that time of fellowship and Bible study. You can, of course, find all of that information on our Facebook page, including a phone number you can use to dial in and participate by phone if you're unable to join through a webcam. We hope that you're joining us in praying for your church family and the many other needs of our community and world during this time. We continue to post an updated prayer list each week, and if you'd like to add your concerns or celebrations to that list, you can reply to the prayer list post on Facebook or send me a message using the contact links in our app. Continue to stay in touch with everything going on here through the Facebook page, this YouTube channel, the PUMC app, and the One Call Now phone system. Links to each of these can be found in the description of this video. If you're joining us for the first time today, we want to welcome you. And everyone who is watching, we hope that you feel at home here at Prospect United Methodist Church during this time of worshiping from our own homes and when we're able to meet back together again. 
Will you join me now for our opening hymn, God of Grace and God of Glory?
has peace with God and forgiveness where all the love I've ever found comes like a blood comes flowing down at the cross Good morning, boys and girls. How are y'all this morning? We're good. That's awesome. And this is like week 5,782 of quarantine. No, not really. About two months in. But I guess we could say that uh, we're probably tired of being at home. And you know what? That's understandable. When somebody forces you to do something that you don't want to do, and you still have to do it. But guess what, everyone? This is for our good. It's for our protection. We may not understand it, but it is. I want to share a verse of scripture with you this morning <clears throat> from Matthew chapter 11, verses 25 through 30. At the time, Jesus said, 
I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned, and you've revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this is what you were pleased to do. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, <clears throat> and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. He says, come to me, all you who are weary and are burdened. And he says, I will give you rest. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. You will find rest. For your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So for some of us, quarantine has been some kind of a burden. We haven't been able to go out and do the things we love to do. We haven't been able to go out to eat in a restaurant. We haven't been able to go to our sports games. We haven't been able to go to school. We haven't been able to go to work. We haven't been able to go to church. But we've still been able to do these things in a new environment. I want to share a story with you this morning from a special little girl that I met a couple years ago. I've asked prayer for several times. But as I found out this week, on Sunday, Mother's Day, she passed. Her name's Hannah. <clears throat> and it, a little over, I think she was a little over two years old or right before her second birthday. Hannah was diagnosed with something called rhabdomyosarcoma. And Hannah and her mother set out to find the cure. And little Hannah has been a warrior. She has fought. And she has won. She has won. No longer does she fight cancer. She's won. Because... Her burden has been taken. Um, I want to share a story with you. <clears throat> this is a collection of short stories that Hannah composed. And these little illustrations, they're hers. Now, they're not all throughout the book. They're just at each story. <clears throat> so here's an example of one of the stories that I'm going to read to you. <clears throat> And the title of it, it says, Hide and Get Help. <laughs> and here's a little illustration. Hannah loved cats. The first time I met her, she was painted like a cat. She always wanted to be a cat. And maybe that was her way of clawing away at cancer. <clears throat> One day, a small kitten was walking down the road waiting to find something to eat. Then she saw a bird. Oh, no, you know that's not a good sign. Cats and birds. She sat down to look because it looked pretty, but something was weird. It kept getting bigger and bigger. Then she found out it was a hawk. And it was heading straight for her. She ran and jumped into a bush and ducked for her life. And another kitten her age took her paw and told her to come with him so she did when they finally stopped the kitten asked her what her name was and she told him snowy and he told her his name was hunter where are we asked snowy you're safe at my backyard said hunter you mean you aren't wild asked snowy uh, not exactly, replied Hunter. I come here for food because an old lady always gives me food. Do you think I could have some? I'm starving, said Snowy. Just do my treat. Meow at the door, said Hunter. Uh, okay. You're sure she won't keep me out? I've already been living with a hurt paw for 10 days, said Snowy. Show her it, and she will probably give you some medicine, said Hunter. Snowy said, okay. 
Snowy went up to the door and scratched on it in a cute way. And then an old lady walked out. Hi there, little one. My name is Lily, but you can call me Grammy. Are you hurt? Oh, you must be hungry too. Come on, Hunter, said Lily. Hunter came inside with them, and then Grammy took Hunter to a well-locked kitchen with a bowl of food, and then she took Snowy to another room that looked like a nurse room. Snowy got a little scared, but then Grammy gave her a tuna and then put some cream on her hurt leg and then bandaged it up and then took her to the kitchen and gave her a can of cat food and then said, Eat up, little darlings. Snowy ate her food and then went with the lady and got in her lap and snuggled up on her and went fast to sleep. Thank you, Hannah, for sharing your short story with us. Hide and get help. And that's exactly what Jesus is talking about when he says, come to me, you who are burdened and heavy laden. He says, give me your yoke. Whatever is forcing you to remain in a certain way. He says, hand over to me. I'll take it. I'll carry it for you. Maybe you're facing a burden of losing something. A friend in your class. Maybe you feel a burden of not knowing enough to go to the second grade, the next grade level. Maybe you just feeling a burden being at home with your parents and your siblings. Go to God. He says, give him that burden. Go pray to him and everything will be okay. And I promise you, it is not as bad as you think it is. Have a good day. Will you join me now in our prayer for illumination? Father God, we come to your word today knowing that if we seek to get our lives in order, we must order our lives after your word. We come recognizing that you are the source of all good things and nothing else can take your place, yet we too often seek the things of this world before the things of God. So in this moment, let our hearts and lives be shaped by your word as it is read and proclaimed, for there is no truth but yours. And there is nothing we need that you have not already provided through your Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning, church family. We're sharing the gospel with you this morning. We're not together in body, but thank God we can be together in spirit. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the book of Matthew chapter 6, beginning with verse 25 through 33. Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor about your body, what you shall put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor give unto barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? And which of you being anxious can add one cubit to his span of life? And why are you so anxious about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you this morning, even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these ones. But if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is alive and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O oh, men of little faith, therefore 
Do not be anxious, saying, What we shall eat, or what we shall wear, or what we shall drink. What shall we wear? For the Gentiles says, Seek all the things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them all. But this morning, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Church family, this is the word of God this morning for you, the people of God. Let us pray. Our eternal God and Father, we thank you this morning for Jesus Christ. We are not together in body, but we're together in the Spirit. And I pray this morning for the entire church family. I pray, God, that we're, we'll have a good spiritual service here this morning. We can't be with one another, but we can still be together in one body in the Spirit. And I thank you, thank you for the privilege to share your word this morning. During these circumstances, we do not can control, but thank God he's in control. And we're going to trust him and believe that everything's going to work, all, work out for good, for our glory. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray and thank you, God, for this opportunity to share your gospel. The greatest thing in the world is the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, when we come become Christians, we got to format and we need to put everything in order. And that's what God wants. And the first, there are some things, first thing we need to put in order is the Lord Jesus Christ. Because while we were yet sinners, Romans 5 and 8 says, Christ died for us. And thanks be to God this morning, we're only sinners saved by the grace of God. Well, what is the grace of God? The grace of God this morning is enjoying all God's riches at Christ's expense. Ain't God good? Jesus is the good shepherd. He gave his life for the sheep. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And Father knows me, and I know my Father. I lay down my life for the sheep. And thank God this morning as his sheep, we follow him, and we know his voice. That's a voice different from all any voice. The voice of the Lord Jesus Christ. Second, because Jesus is our companion that sticks with us closer than a brother. There are some friends who pretend to be friends, but Jesus is the greatest friend that we'll ever have. Somebody said one time, what was a friend? A friend's one that steps in when the world steps out. Praise the Lord, that's what Jesus Christ does for us. It has been said if you had one friend, you had had more true friend. You had had more than your share. I listened to Dr. Graham many, many years ago. He said everybody needed five close friends. I don't know how many close friends I got, but I have plenty of acquaintances. And this morning, in your prosperity, your friends know you. But in adversity, you know your friends. Second, because Jesus this morning is the companion who gives us victory for Christian living. 1 Corinthians 15 and 7 says, But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. When we have the Lord Jesus Christ, we all have victory. 
and we can all be winners. Now, if I, we were playing baseball this morning, one team would win and one team would lose. But I thank God this morning, we're all winners. And winners never quit. They never lose, and losers never win. And thank God this morning, we are on the winning side because we have the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, what else do we need in the Christian life? We need the Bible. We need a road map. The Bible is the most precious book in the world. Psalms 19 and 10 says it's more be desired than all the gold and silver, sweeter than the dripping of honeycomb. They said years ago they had a for us old saying in China, no Bible, no breakfast. I imagine in America we have a lot of hungry Christians this morning. We need the Bible first in our life. What, might, what makes the Bible different about any of the book? The Bible is the only book you can ever read with the author present. Every time I open the book to read from this Bible, God is present with us. I hear people say sometimes, you know, I've read through the Bible several, several times. I found out it's not how many times you read through the Bible. Praise the Lord. But it's how many times the Bible reads through you. The greatest book in the world. It's more Bible sold than any other book in the world. It has been said after Sunday morning, after the preaching, and the church opened in their Bible, 80% of the Christians carried home, put it up, and never pick it up till next Sunday. But brothers and sisters, we need, we need to read the Bible, Bible daily. I have an old saying sometimes when I go to, the, to a restaurant or somewhere every morning to eat or I tell them I've already been in the greatest book, book of the Bible. Now I says I've already been in the real world. And now I says what's happened, we, I want to know what's happening in this world. Because the Bible was written for our instruction. When you follow the Bible, you go the right way. Why is the Bible so important? The Bible is the only book that will give us instruction. I can give you advice, and your friends can give you advice, but only God can give us instruction. He will instruct us and teach us the way we should go. When we put God first in our life and honor Him, He will direct our path and he'll lead us the way we should go. And you know what? After God has been so good to us, we need to give God the first part of our Christian earnings. We should pay the tithe. Well, what is the tithe? The tithe is an outward manifestation of a spiritual inward commitment. And I found out during life that God can do more with $90 than I can do with a hundred. Well, why is tithing so important? Because Jesus ta taught tithing. I know and you know that tithing will not get us to heaven, but tithing will help us spread the gospel, and keep the gospel going. And everybody needs to hear the gospel. Jesus himself taught tithing. In Luke 
11.42, But woe to you Pharisees, for you tithe men and root in all of these other things, which it says you, what you ought to have done, tithing is good, we need the tithe, we shouldn't forget our brothers and sisters. Well, what's another reason why we tithe? The Apostle Paul emphasized tithing. 1 Corinthians 6 and 2, On the first day of every week, each of us should put aside something aside for the Lord Jesus Christ. There's a little story goes, they, <clears throat> they asked a $1 bill and a $10 bill and a $20 bill to give their experience. And so the $20 bill says, well, he says, you know, I've had a good life. I've done a lot of traveling, been all over the country and had a good life. And that's the $20 bill says, what about you? Well, he says, I've been several places and I in, I've really enjoyed life. And that's the $1 bill to share his experience. He says, church, church, church. That's all he knew. But tithing is very special. Jacob set a good example for tithing. Because the tithe is a return to God for his blessings. Genesis 28, 22. And this stone which I have set up for a pillar shall be God's house. And all that I give, that he gives me, I will give him a tenth. Friends, we can't out give God. The more we give God, the more he gives us. There was an elderly man who lived in the community, and every time he was on a fixed income, <clears throat> every time he got his pension, he'd always go to the church, and he'd pay, and he'd pay his tithe out of that Social Security check. And so after so long, the secretary finally asked him, says, Sir, why do you come here every month and pay your tithe? He says, listen. He says, I have hard trouble. And he says, I may go to meet the Lord any time. And he says, I don't want to go with his money in my pocket. So let's always give the Lord what he asks us to do. And I thank God this morning that I am part of a church that gives. We're giving church. And God blesses us because of our giving. Malchor tells us in 3 and 10, bring the full tithe in the storehouse that our barns may be full. <clears throat> and when we put God to the test, he'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that we're not able to receive overflowing. When we give God the tithe, we are seeing that the gospel is going out. We, not keep, we shouldn't keep anything that rightly belongs to God. Well, what is tithing? Tithing is a spiritual discipline. I believe when we tithe and give our tenth, it's so much easier to follow the other spiritual disciplines that God sets out for us. Well, what else should we put in our life this morning? The first among the institution honored by Christ should be the church. <clears throat> What we can't gather this morning is a church body and body, but we can be together in the spirit. And I thank God, I thank God, because the church this morning <clears throat> has been purchased by the blood of Christ. Acts 20, 28. 
says, Take heed to yourselves and all the flock which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God, which was obtained by his own blood. Brothers and sisters, this morning, with the, the church, with all of its faults and all of its failures, is still the greatest organization in the world. And I thank God I'm part of the church. One elderly lady started was going to the church one Sunday. And man, it was raining, raining, raining. And you know, when you live for the Lord, people watch you. As she was getting ready, going to the church that morning and walked by one of her neighbors, it was just pouring, pouring down rain, and she was uh, walking, and he says to her, he says, I knew you wouldn't go to the, to the church this morning in all of this rain. She says, I'm not going to the church. I am the church. I'm going to the meeting place. I'm the church this morning, but God, we can't get together to be at the meeting place, but we can still worship you in spirit and truth. Well, the second reason, because the Lord Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone of the church. Ephesians 2, 19 and 20 so then you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are saints and members of the household of God. You know what? There's only two types of person that people in this world. You either was a saint or you ain't. Well, what is a saint? A saint's one that the light shines to. And I'll tell you this morning, God's given us plenty of time to get the lights, get it mighty, mighty bright. Because he's using this voice to give every Christian an opportunity to grow close to the God and get where we really need to be. Because brothers and sisters, God's soon coming and I believe God is so merciful and so good. He's given the whole world an opportunity to get ready. And another thing, the founder of Jesus Christ built the church, the apostles and the prophets is part of the church. And thank God Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. And when we get saved... We join, we're not, we don't join the church, we're born into the church. Because Jesus loved the church so much. Ephesians 5, 25 says, Husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for us. God loves you and I, and he loved his church. One elderly gentleman come home one day and was feeling so bad, just like, felt like he had no friends and nobody cared anything for him. And he looked at his wife, he says, "Hon, nobody loves me. She says, don't say that. <laughs> She says, Jesus Christ loves you. Praise the Lord. He loves us all. Why is the church so important? Because the church has been cleansed by Christ. And this morning, 1 Corinthians 6 and 11 says, Some of you were whoremongers, thieves, and robbers. But he says, Thank God. This morning, if you've, been, if you've been saved, you've been sanctified, you've been justified in the name of the Lord Jesus 
Jesus Christ and in one spirit of the living God. I tell people when you get saved, you can't always be sanctified, but thank God this morning, through the power of the Holy Spirit, I am sanctified. Another thing, the first thing among the Christian's enterprise should be soul winning. We need to be soul winners this morning for the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the Lord Jesus Christ commanded Christians to witness for him. Matthew 28, 19 and 20, Jesus came and said to his disciples, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Now you go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, name of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And lo, I am all with you always to the close of the age. When we begin to witness for the Lord, remember before you ever go out to witness to talk to people about God, you need to talk to God about people. Acts 1 and 8 says, You shall be my witness, and you shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, she shall be witnesses in Jerusalem and in Samaria and in Judea and unto the all ends of the earth. <clears throat> when Jesus was commissioning his disciples, he told them, he says, you go into to the upper room. And he says, you stay there till you have been endured with power. And when that power comes upon you, you'll be clothed with power. And brothers and sisters, when we get the power of God, I believe we want to witness for God. We can all be witnesses. We can't all be lawyers, but we can all be witness. Because those who follow Jesus Christ should be fishers of men. Jesus told his disciples, he says, lay aside everything and follow me and I will make you fishers of men. You may go to the river and fish and not catch any fish, but I promise you one thing, if you fish for God, you will catch fish. And God wants us to be soul winners. Because when we become soul winners, we'll shine the Lord Jesus Christ and we will bring other people to the Lord. I really, when I get to heaven, I'm pretty sure the first thing God's going to ask me, who come with you? And I'm going to be able to say, Lord Jesus, all these people you see around you, I brought them into the kingdom. My brothers and sisters, we may have faults, we may have failures, but we can all be soul winners for the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you live for the Lord and be a soul winner, he will bless us. And God, in closing, Jim Elliot, the old Indian missionary, said, He is no fool to give up that he can't keep. Praise the Lord to gain that he can't lose. And thank God this morning, I can't lose because I'm on the winning side. 
And I thank God for that. And if you don't know the Lord today, you need to get acquainted with Him. Because you're going to meet the Lord and you want to meet Him with the blood of Jesus upon you. And when Jesus sees the blood, He will pass over you. And let us live so that God will pass over us. Let us pray. Our eternal God and Father, we thank you for Jesus Christ, who is the great shepherd, who gave his life that we could all have life and have it more abundantly. Thank God this morning I have eternal life eternal life where one day I'm going to live and be with you forever. In my closing words, if you don't know God, you need to know Him. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. It's an important time as we gather to, today to continue our time of reflection on the proclamation of the Word, but also for a time in the life and ministry of the church to share pastoral concerns and pastoral needs that impact this congregation and this community. And so this morning I'm going to bring to you a number of individuals related to our church as well as connected to our community, that I'm inviting you to let's join together to pray for and pray with. Miss Annie Harris has had surgery this week. We want you to keep her in our thoughts and prayers. Miss Stephanie Lowry will be having surgery uh, in a couple of uh, days, and we would ask that you be in prayer for her. Now, we know that there are a number of families related to this community and this area that are having to deal with uh, COVID-19. We want to pray for those families and also to remind this community and this congregation that we need to be very uh, diligent as well as respectful and careful about how we continue to deal with this because it is impacting rural communities as it has never done before, and especially uh, our community as well. The Reverend Charles Locklear, uh, a good friend of ours. He's been and spoke at this church many times. He, is, he lost his son. We would ask that you remember uh, Reverend Charles and his uh, lovely wife, Gwen. And then we want to be in prayer for... Uh, Craig Locklear. Craig is uh, related to this church, grew up in this church, and Craig needs our prayers because he is challenged and suffering with a very, the very dreaded de a disease of cancer. Then we've had some deaths that's related to uh, families and friends in this church, a Bray Boy family. Uh, we want you to keep them in our prayers. And furthermore, we've got a number of persons who are, are home from surgery. Miss Miriam Locklear is recovering. We want you to be in prayer for her. And we have a number of cancer patients that we continue uh, to keep in our thoughts and our prayers. And so now I'm going to invite you to let's join together as we pray together. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank you for this blessed day that you have given to us. We don't know the number of people that will witness and hear the proclamation of the word today. But Lord, we are praying that lives and hearts will be touched. And now we're focusing upon the pastoral concerns and needs of our congregation. We shared these names. We shared the circumstances. And, and Lord Jesus, we're just going to place them into your care and ask that you meet their needs according to your perfect will, and that you will strengthen each and every one of these individuals who are having to deal with sickness, as well as challenges with their health, and also the loss of loved ones. 
Now we thank you for this time and we present these to you and we thank you all of this in Jesus' name. And now I'm inviting you to pray as the Lord uh, taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed will be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and give you peace in your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us again today for our time of worship. We want to say again thank you to those of you who have continued to support the ministries of our church. If you'd like to know how you can partner with us, you may give through the link on our homepage, the Give tab in our app, or by sending cash and check donations to the church office in person or through the mail. As we were reminded today, when we place God first in our lives, everything else will fall into place. We thank you for making this church a financial priority in your life, and we pray God's richest blessings on you. Generous God, in abundance you give us things both spiritual and physical. Help us to hold lightly to the fading things of this earth and grasp tightly to the lasting things of your kingdom so that what we are and do and say may be our gifts to you through Christ who calls all of us to seek the things above, where He lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is Christ alone and His kingdom that we seek in our lives. It is the purpose of God that comes first in our hearts. So will you join me now in singing our closing hymn, Seek Ye First. Receive this benediction. Do not consume yourselves with questions, what will we eat and what will we drink and what will we wear? The outsiders, they make themselves frantic over these questions. They don't realize that your heavenly Father knows exactly what you need. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and then all these things will be given to you too. So don't worry about tomorrow. Let tomorrow worry about itself. Living faithfully is a large enough task for today.